This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, it is Tuesday night. That means that all of the campaigns and everything are in, which is great. Which means it's time for us to go through them all and see what's happening on this big old Tuesday dump of stuff. 61 campaigns when I start the voiceovers for this. And uh, we'll, oh, I don't think any of them have canceled just yet, but you never know. If it takes a couple hours to get through. And uh, the world of crowdfunding is always tumultuous. I did get a heads up for, on um, Dark Gate Games for uh, a brand new order of the Vampire Hunters. They sent an email out and they said there's going to give some type of uh, either a giveaway or discounts or something like that if you signed up with the newsletter for that. Uh, I don't have much in the way of details, but there's at least a month uh, for that to happen. So I'll find out more before I put any links to anything. But I bought Order of the Vampire Hunters. I painted the core box. I have not had a chance to play it. Um, I mean, it's it's a neat game. It's Zombicide with vampires at its core. Um, and they're going to be transferring. It was in a modern era. They're going to be transferring it into... Uh, a, a not necessarily medieval era, but somewhere between the medieval age and the modern era. So uh, I would say like 1700s, maybe, maybe 1600s. So you know, uh, not quite the fantasy setting, but uh, still in the past. So whatever type of stuff you like, then uh, maybe it'll work. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a lot of European vampire stuff going on there. Uh, you can skip ahead. You can do anything you want. Uh, if you can like and subscribe, that helps me out. All that kind of fun stuff. You can even share it with this with your friends. If uh, you think that any part of this would be helpful to them, or if there's any cool games that you want them to know about, you can always just uh, right-click on the links in the description or in the comments also, and you can direct it directly to your friend if you think they'll get some uh, use out of the channel. Otherwise, let's get started. And uh, I will try not to gab too much because it's going to be a long one. First up, we have a party game called Humans, period, that uh, needs three to eight people. So it's like a social deduction type game where some of the people will be human and some of the people will not. And through the course of the rounds of the party, the quirks will come out and the humans will have to figure out who's non-human and what their quirk is. So you'll be given some little bits of small talk on this little booklet as you can get see it all gets one page that uh, is folded up into an eight page booklet and you print that out yourself and you can play for five bucks and you can get all of the previous games from the publisher for 20 bucks to go along with it so i mean if you like what they've got you can get in whatever it is that you need you can also put yourself into the game for a little bit more money and go from there. But otherwise, you're just looking for quirky people and uh, maybe there'll be some red herrings. Maybe a character will be an actual red herring if you paid them. Maybe that's what it could uh, possibly be, your non-human character. Uh, it just seems like a neat deal. I have Inhuman Conditions, which I have yet to be able to play, which is, I think, a similar system to the uh, Blade Runner uh, test for the replicants and maybe this is part of that kind of thing where you're trying to figure out which one is three goblins on a trench coat that kind of feel then we have another small game but this one is for solo play only this is insurmountable from button shy 10 bucks not the end of the world in the cost and it comes in a little wallet and the point of the game is to take these cards there's not a whole lot of them there's uh just a few and you will have five at a time trying to figure out your path up the mountain. And there's going to be certain conditions that you have to follow. Uh, there's a few different levels of difficulty that you can add to go along with it. So you can constantly have yourself a challenge other than the randomization of the cards. And plan your way up the mountain as you refresh and you go. So it looks like you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards might get you up there and you have another three that might not to take you down another weird path and each one will have various rules as you go through it it's an interesting idea something to to puzzle on in your break it's uh wallet sized so even if you didn't keep it in your wallet it will definitely fit in your pocket and um maybe just throw some extra card sleeves or something on there it's got this free expansion called the big climb to go along with it so 
there you go. Not the end of the world, not all that expensive, and uh, something that you can play pretty easy no matter where you're at. Dr. Finn Games is one of those publishers that makes a lot of uh, tiny games, and they've popped up a bunch of times here in the past. This time, it's a very quick campaign, only two weeks on the turnaround for the Little Flower Shop. This time with dice, and you can see they've created 27 other campaigns from before. The Flower Shop, or Flower Ideas, has popped up in a lot of different um, games from before. So it's obviously popular enough. It seems to be neutral enough for people to be happy playing the the games and not worried about the the content too much uh you can pick up the rules i don't see any way to play it in advance such as uh, tabletop um simulator or anything like that there's like a mosquito flying around i'm trying to <laughs> they're throwing me off uh but you can also get these promo packs that go along with it uh that will allow you to expand some stuff out such as employees potpourri some uh extra mini cards and some daily goals that you can throw in there just to spice things up so if you're into the flower shop uh theme then i think this might be a fun one only half an hour play time so it's something once you bring it to the table uh between meals or something maybe you can clear it off pretty quickly and just play something while you're winding down at night for the war gamers out there we have the russian campaign original 1974 from Jedco back in 1974 being recreated here by Compass Games. Compass has quite a few of these war games that they put out. Probably like one every two or three weeks uh, for Kickstarter. So um, they've got the concept down. they got you know the maps, the little pieces and all that. So really it's just about recreating the, the missions for you to play. Uh, and whatever uh, special rules happen to be a part of it. This thing seems to also have things like weather as an effect, so that's kind of neat, not always present in uh, the different war games that I see. And uh, yeah, there you go. So sometimes you get to um, you get some minis. It depends really on what's going on this time. It seems to be just a whole bunch of different campaign or battles in the campaigns, as you can see, uh, where they're all part of. There's a pretty big list of the Russian front. And think about the Russians, if you were not aware of it, they suffered the most losses in World War II um, by like orders of magnitude almost. Uh, you, you might wonder like who, they fought on many different fronts for a long time. Uh, first with the, Rus the Germans and then against them. And they had the bitter cold to fight. Um, and then they had their own leaders in that kind of thing uh, causing issues as well um, they they suffered ridiculous losses I can't I can't even imagine what that does to a national psyche uh, so if you wanted to see what suffering in that kind of war system is like then maybe you follow them through these five years of battle uh, yes 41 to 45 I think it's about five years but maybe you don't want little uh, square pieces maybe you want something a little different these are the aircraft in 1941 for the invasion of crete in greece and uh they are tiny so six millimeter scale feels microscopic uh but it makes it so the planes and all that kind of stuff uh tanks and that are manageable then they end up being like the size of micro machines um, the company is 2D6 Wargaming, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to utilize uh, any particular system. This is not for a, a game. This is for minis. Usually I put these towards the end, but these are so specific for a certain type of Wargaming. I figured just let you know. Uh, there's are all the breakdowns of the types of figures and, and infantry and all that. The reason why you get something so tiny is because you're going to use a lot of them and a lot of different forces. And you put them on these strips and stuff so uh, that they also kind of fit within the scale of uh, the other machinery that's available. Boats and planes and all that kind of big stuff. So, yeah, a lot of folks are into wargaming, into, you know, this kind of kind of painting and uh, putting these things out for themselves. For $39.00. You can get started on either the British or the Germans, and it kind of goes up from there. It looks like the whole battle's $138.
which isn't the end of the world. Uh, it looks like you get a fair number of minis uh, to go along with it and stuff to paint. Uh, just get some uh, good eyeglasses as well, or some magnifying glasses maybe. And they're popular in your homes, dog park. It's a game, board game about walking the dog. And uh, yeah, it seems like a relaxing activity. You gotta do it, dog needs the exercise. It comes with 221 unique dogs. I thought about getting a dog. I think my next dog is going to be a Doggo Argentino is what I'm thinking about right now because I need a guard dog. Um, and uh, I think that a white coat will be able to handle the heat uh, from here in California a lot better than one of these thicker ba uh, uh, boys or girls or whatever they end up being. I'm not going to be all that picky. It's like I just need a dog to keep the place safe. Um, so one to four players. Uh, I don't know if dogs themselves count as players. Probably not. But a minimum of 40 minutes. We're averaging around, uh, you know, the high end of 80. So it should keep you entertained. Little treats. Hopefully they don't taste good to a dog. So you don't have to, like, dig it out of their poop or anything. Uh, because let's just face it, that could happen. Um, collector's edition for 50 British pounds. So that's, what, 60 bucks or so and you get some playing cards to go along with it with all the different breeds if you're a big dog person that likes a bunch of different breeds then i think that this might be fun um they are awesome i had a lady on one of those uh it was bumble i think and we were talking and it seemed like it was going well and uh i referred to dogs as a technology and she got super upset i mean because if without us they're wolves we turn them into dogs to be tools. And the more you find out about these breeds, all these wonderful uh, things, uh, to take care of your dog, you have to respect that they have a bred-in personality trait. There's one dog that goes surfing, and it was having all kinds of, uh, I don't know what the breed was, but it's a, it's a sheep dog. And it was losing its mind. The owner couldn't figure out what was going on. But the, the dogs run across the back of the sheep and the, I don't want to say fluctuation, uh, maybe, of the wave felt like the sheep underneath them. So when the dog would go running on the, the backs of the sheep or go running out on the surfboard, it got that same uh, desire out of them. So you got to see that dogs have been programmed. <laughs> you got to figure out their mentality in order to make them happy. And, uh, you know, treat them like they're almost uh, a robot to, a, to an extent. They can be loving uh, because they're made to be everybody's friend. Except certain dogs, like the Doggo Argentino, is made to eat you. So that's kind of why I wanted a ghost with teeth in order to, uh, to protect the house. This one... Not necessarily as severe as that. If you got a Dalmatian, those things are crazy. So maybe you would get that. <laughs> you can play it on Tabletopia. You can uh, check it out uh, for yourself. Uh, you know, I could talk about dogs for a while, but I'm not gonna. But I think it's kind of a neat little, little relaxing type of game that might uh, be fun. It is Birdwood Games' first one out. Maybe it'll kind of fit that same niche that... Uh, wingspan and a lot of those other animal based games fits it looks neat uh i don't know if it's like a kennel club uh specific accurate paintings and all that kind of stuff but it looks like basic representations of dogs you've seen some spaniels some shepherds you know that kind of thing there was a beagle little corgi for the queen you know all kinds of fun neat so neat stuff and then because your childhood must be uh, forever, you have Masters of the Universe, the board game Clash for Eternia. Didn't you just see a Masters for the Universe game? Yes, you did. It was on GameFound, and it is not this one. This is a different one, but it looks the same because it's the same franchise. So if you didn't like the first one because of some reason, but you did want yourself a He-Man game, this is cool Mini or Not's attempt to do that. So you get the same basics of uh, Battle Cat and He-Man and all the funny people that uh, he normally is a part of. And uh, Skeletor and Beastman and Evelyn and whoever else would fit in the minions. And you're going to run around. This is a Michael Chennault game. I have a couple of his uh, 
like uh, the World of Smog. Grab both those games, and haven't had a chance to play the the Gen on Her Majesty's Service, but I have had a chance to play one time, and then that's where I I busted up my leg <laughs> at that party. Uh, but uh, you know, it seemed like it was a lot of fun, and that's who's uh, putting this one together. Cool Mini or Not is also offering this Kickstarter exclusive giant skull. Uh, basically, it's the size of a playset. So if you wanted that to go with it, then uh, you got that as well. Uh, I think if you're a fan from the 80s, you remember the playset, the, the original, and that's what you kind of want, right? This has a drawbridge that pops out. The uh, terrain and everything looks a lot like uh, Chronicles of Hate, um, if you picked up and played that one. Um, I just don't know where you would put this big old skull, uh, Castle Grey skull thing. Uh, I have enough uh, of an issue finding ways to places to put my giant Cthulhu from uh, Death May Die, and I'm way more interested in that. But I think that uh, Cool Mini or Not has quite the reputation of uh, finding all of the little people that uh, you used to have, and uh, they're going to put some crazy amounts of stretch goals and things towards it. Uh, it's it's not as big as the Marvel United campaign at this point um it's not as big as a zombie side campaign and i think it's just because it's been so long since the younger people of today have been introduced to a good he-man experience uh i know they came out with uh, a couple of different updated versions but they just didn't uh as far as i i am aware because i have no idea how they're different or what took off the kevin smith one seemed interesting and maybe it will have legs but because they went in a slightly different direction some folks are hating on it and i hope that uh, the more interesting storytelling of of his version of eternia will uh, inspire some new creativity in other folks and come up with new content i am on the fence right now of whether or not to pick it up i'm leaning towards not because i have a bunch of other stuff to pay for Hundred and ten dollars is the basic one. Two hundred and ten, uh, twenty double the price gets you the big old uh, plastic gray skull pack. So I'd rather put my money towards finishing paying for some other pledges uh, and then reevaluate my life <laughs> and see which games I'm keeping and all that kind of stuff. That's where I'm at in my life. You do not have to be the collector of everything because this is definitely the type of game. While the Skull playset will not be available until ever uh, again, I mean, until you find a way to pay for it on eBay or 3D print it or whatever you want to do, um, you will be able to find this uh, game at some point in retail, probably for at least a few years. So don't let the FOMO uh, destroy your bank account. If you, it's a big game, it's a big franchise. Uh, if you can't get it, don't feel bad. Uh, you know, just shop smart, shop S smart. Then we have a miniatures game, and this one is represented by dice creatures. So the people themselves are made of dice, almost in like a Minecraft kind of way. This is Dice Quest: The Lost Numbers, and um, you are going to be playing out the fantasy tropes. So you have a guy with an axe, you have an elf-looking person with a bow, you have a wizard and um a dwarf maybe and maybe a thief what i'm not sure which type of thief that would be but it's there uh skeletons and other things but they're all dice critters so if you're a fan of mine mine quest was minecraft then uh maybe this aesthetic will appeal to you or if you just wanted something that was a little on the goofy side and you wanted to have um uh, a type of dungeon crawl that could be fun um, you get something you can get people into that don't have to be all that into RPGs, uh, the scenery and all those different pieces that come with it. These resin models all look pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a fun little game. Maybe the type of thing that you might play people that you might play, uh, Mice and Mystics with, uh, or any of those other type of, uh, gateway games and just to something to get them started and looks like it'd be kind of fun. So if you're into it, check it out not all that expensive and what's the total price it's about 100 bucks it's what you'd expect 
Then we have another fantasy game. This is Altenor Secrets. And uh, it is more like what you find in very similar other games of the fantasy genre. They have uh, this, this stuff would fit well. You could use the minis um, in lots of different places if you want to. Or, you know, you can swap out other minis from your other games to be in this one. If you didn't like these ones in particular, there's lots of different ones. Um, fighters and winged people and uh, people that look like steampunk bards and other crazy things to go along with it. So the same basic fantasy world uh, that you find in most of these games. And you go through what you can to get through the story. It's pretty simple. It's a... Uh, a strategy that works there's a lot of games that are in this space and uh, the more you find out or the, if you wanted to add anything on there's lots of cool ways to do that 54 millimeter scale on some of the pieces uh, if you wanted to get this uh, three miniature painter pledge it is expansive so 83 euros that's well over 100 bucks um, but you know maybe you're into it I just saw a thing from big child creatives Oh, so it looks like the sculpts themselves are from Big Child, and they are a very popular and very big um, company when it comes to creative endeavors. Uh, they're the ones that make, yeah, so uh, a lot of the cool mini are not stuff. They do a lot of sculpts for a lot of companies, including for themselves. So, yeah, they are a high-quality group, and it seems to be... Uh, you know, that they have not uh, diminished in any capacity because they're not working for some giant publisher. They seem to be still making some really good stuff. They would be easily be on par with the type of things that you're finding in Etherfields, for example. There's some ones that look a lot like they'd fit there. Then we have Omble Tournament, uh, a high fantasy duel, simultaneous gameplay. This looks really familiar, and I don't know why. Maybe it's popped up in the past. Uh, card game so you're gonna have various elements and you're gonna duel back and forth I don't know if it's like Magic the Gathering you have to buy a bunch of cards uh, and not knowing what you're going to be getting or if it's one of the newer types where you get uh, everything all at once and then you just decide from there what you're gonna build um, looks like there's four different factions so we look at it there's sword water assassination and fire uh, as your skills and you can play them in different modes and that kind of stuff so that's neat looks like you get all all the stuff uh in yen okay so 33 dollars <laughs> um and if you wanted it for a two pack then you get a little bit of a discount for 60 bucks um if you think more people are involved then maybe you'll have to get separate pledges you can check it out on Tabletop Simulator, Tabletopia, and with the own real book, and just see if it's for you, and go from there. So, if you're into these type of card games, I think that it might be a lot of fun. Um, the artwork looks not in you know terribly detailed, which probably works in its favor, which allows those colors to pop more, and uh, doesn't get too confused on the things, and it kind of feels like the the power of the magic coming through because it's just that uh, silhouette of a character and then that, that that powerful color popping in so that might be a good move if you want to check it out it looks like they're pretty much gonna be funded hopefully by the end of the week so that's a good sign then we have one of those japanese inspired games this one is sushi boat and you're going to be competing against players to swipe sushi so you're going to need at least two people to do it. And uh, somehow the sushi is going to be working its way through uh, some type of conveyor system. And you're going to be using your pawns to get the most. <laughs> 60 bucks looks to be the, the low end on the buy-in. Um, the board looks pretty big. There's some mainly paper components i don't think there's much in the way of plastic so you'll have to decide if uh, 60 bucks is worth it to you for this but it looks like uh french japanese english whatever it is that you need um they've got you covered 60 bucks because of the the added 
cost of everything right now probably isn't the end of the world. Um, just inflation is expected to keep going through the roof. But I would normally have probably thought for a Kickstarter that would be a little bit lower. But that's just how it's going to go for a little while. Everything's going to be super expensive. And um, if you're not from the U.S., you're going to pay 30 bucks. If you are from the U.S., you're going to pay 12 Um So just keep in mind, $72, pretty much all in for that one. Awkward Guests was kind of a neat little idea uh, for a party game. This one is Scandalo from the same people in Madrid, already funded, so that's cool. Mega Corpin, and you're an investigative journalist in this one, doing what you can to socially deduce whatever's going to happen in the next uh, scandal. I'm not sure how they do it language independent, but that's always good in case you're not a native speaker of the people, and uh, that makes it work pretty well. I like this idea here. This one. No dead times during the game. Because the social deduction games are a lot less fun once you get eliminated. And for the most part, it's just hard to come up with something to do in between the rounds. So that part sucks. Uh, also, solo mode, if you wanted to. So lots of uh, replayability, some solo abilities, and all that kind of stuff. If you've been looking to play some type of social deduction thing, then lots of cool ideas might be present here. Um, so yeah. It's a card game for the brilliant deck system is the system that they go by. You have 16 possible stories. You have various connections that you add together with the newspapers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, could be fun. Artwork is stylized, but uh, approachable. It looks like um, almost like a political cartoon in uh, the way that they approach it, which fits pretty well as it's supposed to be investigative journalism, so it'd be something that you find also in the newspaper. So you can do a print and play if you wanted to, and you can play it first in Tabletop Simulator to see if it's uh, for you. So I think that's all, all great. It's all pretty neat deal. Um, some good reviews there if you want to check it out. But you see what I mean here for the political cartoon kind of aesthetic. So check it out and uh, play through it if you want. Maybe I'll check it out this weekend and uh, see how that solo mode goes. Then we have the Red Bernouse, Algeria in 1857. So this is a war game that offers cooperation for one to four players uh, as you play through it. So, yeah, I do not know much, uh, but you are going to apparently be invaded by the French. I'm going to guess Napoleon or one of the Napoleons had something to do with it, considering how it's an invasion. And you're going to fight them off. So you work together to defend your villages and exhaust the French assault. So maybe it's like a tower defense uh, system with the played out through these cards. And yeah, seems like they're offering some interesting history to check out. Let's see if there's anything at the bottom here for uh, that you can try it out. It doesn't appear so just yet, which isn't uncommon for a lot of the war games, but might be a fun way to play through uh, a historical campaign. The artwork all looks pretty solid. And uh, it looks like it has this Automata deck, I think, is what's going to allow you to play against the game instead of each other. So if you wanted to play against the AI, you can do that. Then we have a game from Australia that I think maybe they forgot that they're from Australia in the sense that uh, Where is Ludi Roo as a title... 99% of your English speaking audience are not going to have anything to connect that with. So it might need some more explanation uh, as to how that title works. It's very psychedelic with the green kangaroo and all that kind of stuff going on. Um, so kangaroo, they're going to be in a secret location. You're going to have a, some type of hidden path that you're going to follow through. Not a lot of description as far as how the game is played, uh, just kind of this blob here. That is probably what's holding this game back the most. Um, the title, maybe, you know, the people are brought in by the question mark and the idea of, of what it might be, and then they see it and they see the psychedelic kangaroo. And uh, okay, is it like a pop art art game? Like, what is it? And then doesn't really explain itself very well. So. You can see it all out there. But it's got bags. Nobody cares about the bags. 
Uh, they want to care about the, the game itself. So is this the board? That's what it says. But what does that mean? It doesn't look like a board. It looks like a poster. So how would it all apply? Uh, I know a lot of people um, love the concepts, but it, that's fine. You just got to take an effort, like a little bouncing kangaroo piece or something like that, showing that this was the actual board and how it would operate would help quite a bit. So that's why the numbers are so low is it that they haven't done a sufficient job of explaining their strange game to people and how, yes, it may be different, but it could be also their favorite game. And that's the challenge for every single person who puts up a campaign. Then we have Bridge City Poker, Portland's Climbing, a trick-taking game where you want to do everything you can to shed your hand. So pretty much like... Um, what you find in a lot of other card games that you can do just with the regular uh, deck of cards. These ones, though, have some extra info on them. So uh, you're going to be using bridges. The cards themselves are, instead of suits uh, of, for that we normally see, the suits themselves are bridges. And then you have different powers of things that you can do. Each one is, is different. It has like a little recipe thing on it that, of things to put together. So it seems like, uh, while pretty dense with info, uh, could be a lot of fun. Now, it does say, you know, it's got some specific ties to Portland, and not everybody lives in Portland. Um, I don't think that people will have a hard time understanding the concept of the bridges and how bridges work and apply. And uh, that might be why it's already achieved its goal. So... Uh, if you wanted to check it out, even if you're just a fan of building bridges, then maybe this one will work for you, or city planning, or any of that kind of cool stuff. And then the ruler of Arcadia has to be replaced, so it's up to you to make them all hail to the crown. And this is a uh, PMP, so I'm going to guess that's print and play, pen and paper. I don't know, it might be a little too much. Uh, yeah, it's 100% a, it's print and play. Usually I see PNP um, instead of PNP uh, up here. I don't know if that confuses anybody, but there you go. So why do you kickstart? Because it's if you don't need to have a bunch of crazy components and everything that you're paying for, then you can have yourself a nice simple game and just kind of get the idea out there and go from there. So it's a hidden roll system. You're the ruler. And uh, there's an orphan. The kingdom's a buzz. You have to choose who's going to be there. So who's going to be at the top? Who's going to win the game? Who's going to be there? Who's the the, the conspiracy people? Who are the imperialists? Who's on your side and who's not? And uh, I guess you guys vote pretty much like Secret Hitler to figure that out. And then it says, Blind Revenge. Awesome card game. Perfect gift. Okay. Well, how's it play? Okay, there's some people. Okay, they got some crazy googly glasses. And hipster animals? How does that work? Cleaning pads. Environmental concerns. How do I play the game? Don't know. I do know that these uh, cleaning pads that contain alcohol, uh, you're going to have to use a lot of them. Or you can get the cheap ones from the uh, CVS or whatever in bulk. Um, I think that's just an every hundred cleaning pads, throwing that in there, it just takes up space. <laughs> um, that might be, uh, otherwise utilized for making the game better. Um, yeah. Or just spending the time to really just tell you how the game plays. Videos don't cut it. You can't just throw everything into a video because people don't always have the ability to click on it. They don't always have the ability to listen to the sound of it. They may be just sitting there in the bathroom at work, thumbing through Kickstarter, because that's what relaxes them, and uh, checking out what's available. And they can't, you know, make a bunch of noise or whatever, because they didn't bring headphones into the work bathroom. But that's where a lot of stuff gets viewed. You got to think of how people use the sites as opposed to just what you think is available to put out or what you think is cool and uh, give people graphics, motion graphics, at least something so that they can check out your game or else you end up 
with single digit backers on what could be a really good game. And I remind everybody, nobody pays me to do this. I make nothing on it. So if they want me to do more than just tell you like, hey, you gotta fix this, then uh, they need to shell out some cash. And uh, I let you guys know when they do that. Journalistic integrity is high, but uh, you know, sometimes money's good too. The Pirate Party Women of the High Seas is a competitive card game with women pirates and special powers. And there were plenty of women pirates in history. So if I can read, I can't really read them. Uh, they might be using some of the historical women. It's hard to tell. But um, you have cannons, you have uh, birds maybe to convey messages. Um, you have different uh, types of pirates and Krakens and ships and maps and treasures and things and all the kind of things you can find. Um, it says that there's six captain cards, one for each suit, so maybe it breaks it down into suits. Um, you're trying to match three of a kind. And they have little pirate points at the top of each one. And as you go through a very various adventures, you can pick up um, the points that go along with them. So it gives some... Uh, some help with the uh, exploration part of things. And Bonnie, Ching Shi, so it does look like they're going for some historical individuals. Uh, Saeed Al Hora. Um, yeah, looks like they're trying to diversify and make something interesting. You can probably find some interesting stories, movies, etc., about each of these individuals after you're done playing. Check it out. And then Johannes Voss Playmat Collection. These are actually um licensed so you can get some pieces of artwork depending on which ones you like uh i think this endless revel was actually wasn't it in um theros i'm not gonna go pull the book down and find out but uh, i'm pretty sure some of these have made their way even to DD stuff 40 bucks uh or if you buy more then it gets a little bit cheaper to uh to get all these different play mats. Sometimes it's nice to have something organized that um, it's not necessarily sticky, but the the friction is high on them, so your cards and things don't fly all around, um, if, especially if you like the different pieces of artwork. So, yeah, 40 bucks because they're licensed. They're legit. They're not just stealing the artwork uh, from the people, so that part's good. But there's only the, a couple of different colors and, and pictures that you can choose from. But uh, at least they're all pretty high quality. So, yeah. Then we have a tower defense game from Japan. Tower defense of magical decks protecting the city from the Demon King. So that's Magic Sword Tactics. Uh, solo play is available. Uh, yeah, okay. It's kind of hard to explain with just boxes of text. Uh, especially when you're cramming two different languages in there. Pretty simple system. Um, there's four paper coasters, I guess, is the low end price. And it's the whole game itself is for 20 bucks. Weapons, towns, enemies. Uh, it's really hard to tell with it. So, like, cram together what part of the game is. This is built mainly for the Japanese uh, buying audience because they cram their advertisements with extra information and lots of words. Not so much for us in America. Uh, we need pictures and we need motion. But um, there's a very specific audience for these Japanese games. And if you're in there, you've probably seen a bunch of these, especially in the last two months. I guess it's tapered down a little bit, but there's been quite a few lately. And, uh, you know, they, they have their own appeal. They have their own following. And if you're in that group, then you'll be really happy just to have it. Then we have Recipe Race, which is kind of like guys' um, grocery games where you are given some type of uh, instruction and then you have to race around the supermarket to find the, the stuff to make the thing. So this is the board. Uh, it looks pretty generic. It looks like something that would pretty easily be uh, made on demand at the Game Crafter, and that's not a problem. 25 bucks gets you there. But here's the thing. Uh, if you're just going to make them with Game Crafter, then you don't need $20,000 to do it because they'll print it on demand and then you just take your your amount that goes with it. So 
uh, a little high in ambition. I would say thousand bucks just to get started, um, and then make the the piece for the people that wanted uh, to pick it up. Um, like I said, Game Crafter, they can make things fairly cheaply and on demand, and there's no components here that um, are not makeable in the U.S. Might be a little expensive just because paper and other uh, wood products are in demand and kind of expensive right now, but uh, I, I, don't know, I think bring it down. Bring it down now. Then we have uh, versus the game where you're going to make challenges that you're going to, I guess, try to do inside your house. Um, I think maybe if you own your home and you don't have kids and you don't have anything nice, then you could do this type of stupid crap. But like if you just have a bunch of Ikea junk... I've fallen over drunk and broken all kinds of things that were this cheap and I didn't care about them. But then I replaced them with things that are nice. And I've seen the age categories of the people that follow the channel and you probably have some nice stuff at this point too. So uh, this is one of those things. It's like a drinking game kind of deal, uh, like an uber complicated version of Twister. And it might be for some people. Uh, I got too much belly to uh, worry about it. Uh, eight people sitting in your house, sta you know, trampling on your furniture and stuff like that. Nah. But if I had a jungle gym and a bunch of foam for people to play around on, then you know maybe that would be something else. But eight to ninety-nine people playing a game in your house right now maybe isn't the best idea <laughs> until next year. Then we have the Circle of Life, 13 hand-painted life cycles about the exploration of nature. And that sounds neat. Um, okay, so what are these things? Well, they're land, sea, air creatures. And all that's kind of neat. Uh, you can get the booklet. You can play it on Tabletop Simulator. Um, but for the most part, you need a lot of just text description. So, uh, I'm not getting paid to explain the game. So, somebody else can go in and watch the video if you think that it's interesting. You're in a crowded space here where there are a lot of other games that are basically doing the same thing. There's that one Australian company that has like 10 games that fit the same bill. There's a bunch of other, uh, even uh, some of the travel games and some of the ones that are about going to national parks kind of also fit within this world so uh if you want to check it out and watch the video then maybe the particular take that this uh group takes on it will be a little better um but it should be fairly harmless it doesn't look like they're going to have like predator prey relationships which is if a game's about the circle of life then i would expect it to be a lot more brutal to be honest with you then we have kids against super boring stuff uh supposedly a family card game it looks a lot like cards against humanity with pictures so yeah there you go the people that you do not want to play cards against humanity with because their best games of cards against humanity have things that are not suitable <laughs> for younger people uh and so you take out all the fun by not having the uh, things that are that are the most disturbing in that game and you give it to your kids so good luck with that then we have quack quack no take backs the card game another family game this time it's about pawns um there's some slapping sticks involved uh i guess that's how you do card selections uh or you get you, you know, I don't know. I think these things are going to break because they look like they're just made out of foam. I think they're going to cause fights. Uh, but if you have a well-adjusted group of people that can handle it, then you can check this part out uh, yourselves. I would doubt there'd be anything on um, Tabletop Simulator because thwacking people with a stick is kind of hard to emulate in that. Um, but yeah, 
don't let it break anything in your house because that's just what kind of happens. You start whacking sticks around and throwing people, kids don't pay attention, and then something comes flying off of a, of a shelf somewhere. You know what I mean. And then this happens way too often where you just take a movie and the Hollywood people, they just throw different people in it and they're like, oh, it's a remake. So here is a game about making all those remakes you hate. Just throwing in characters. Uh, I think because they're public figures that they maybe don't necessarily fully have the rights to their own likeness and name. Uh, but if their name was copywritten in any way, uh, that could be a problem for a world gone mad, these folks. Uh, maybe just because they're in Australia, different rules apply. But you get 150 movies, and, or 150 people and 100 movies, and you have to recast who would be in them, and then, I guess, studio notes mess with it in some way. I don't know how it would all get scored, but that's kind of neat. Um, and then if you are uh, involved in it, then you can get uh, some extra booster packs of characters, and then the Kickstarter people will, I guess, be able to add 20 new cards that they choose, that they think is going to be awesome. So that's a good way to inc include the um, the the people that are backing you in uh, the project, and it might work. It might function pretty well. It doesn't look like there's any crazy minis or anything like that to get involved. So uh, they probably have a lot of options to get it produced in um, other countries than China, and then hopefully by the time it comes out, you won't have to worry about all the extra shipping costs and other things driving up the prices for everybody else. And here nearby me, out in Irvine, they came up with Reputation, a dystopian corporate-themed bidding game. So you are going to be your own, uh, what do they call those guys? Dragons Den in the UK? They call them um, Shark Tank here. I think that's what this is about, is about pitching and bidding in the uh, corporate world, being all cutthroat and having various characters that you're going to be... Um, so, yeah, there's some, this play-wise looks a lot like Imperium Contention. <laughs> there's a game that I have here uh, where you're just playing various mega corporations and then trying to survive. But it doesn't necessarily look like combat. It looks like economics is the weapon. Uh, and interesting they have a worker investment system we don't actually do that anymore in business invest in, in our workers um so that is an interesting way to make it work but yeah it looks like a reputation Ooh, so maybe this is uh business as decided by the people from google <laughs> and the way that they have their philosophy as opposed to uh the people running the wall street journal so I think the idea here is like what I was saying before, you create products and whatnot, but uh, it's maybe not like a social game where you would throw out pitches. Instead, it's just assumed as part of the storytelling of the game, and then you, you play through various cards in order to bring them to life. Like I said, looks like Imperium, just on a business level. Started with a tiny war game, and we got another one. Zip Wars. Five bucks. Rules light. And then uh, you can skirmish whatever you want, whatever characters, whatever things you want to do. It looks like it's uh, six-sided dice only for a conflict uh, resolution. And then you can even get a physical game for seven bucks. And whether it be shovels or weapons of mass destruction, you uh, can figure out how to play back and forth with this tiny game. So if you're bored with other rules, give it a shot. So this is not bears versus babies. This is beware of bears. Um, they say it's a Russian roulette game. So yeah, if you're going to get eaten by a bear, that's a way to go. You can get a plush uh, lost bear, polar bear. And then you have to basically go through the forest and try not to get eaten by bears. That sounds like real life. So it seems like a neat thing that you could relate to. 
Um, lots of ways to die from being eaten by bears. There's some maulings and a few other things. Um, it looks like maybe you have to flip cards. Not like a... More like memory, but not like a, what you call it, um, flip cup. Where you just like throw it up and then see if it lands face, face up or face down. And then, oh, it's a bear. Um, you have a couple of functions to uh, peek. Uh, so you can track and all that kind of thing. Tells the story. Um, if you can offer them some trash and donuts, then maybe you can survive the, the flip. So that's kind of a neat deal. I think it's interesting. Kind of demonizes bears, though. And they are just so cuddly. Big old fluff balls. Full of teeth. And claws. And hunger. And they eat you while you're just still screaming on the ground. Because they're vicious. <laughs> but they're so cute at the same time. I can't, I can't square this circle. Maybe we need a cute game then. So we got Verdant. Which is about your houseplant collection. So pretty simple little game. From the folks that came out with uh, Calico, which was a really popular Kickstarter game a little while ago. Uh, I think Jesse or his girlfriend from Quackalope uh, got a advanced thing I think I saw earlier this morning. They got to play it. Um, just like the other flower games uh, or nature games or anything out there that doesn't have a whole lot of violence in it. This would be those types of folks. People that like the plants. Maybe they want to learn about more plants or just don't want to go through all the violent stuff so this would be something i think my grandmother would really enjoy you know that type of folks now i've seen another game that was very much like this and it was called like the real game of life or something like that and this one is just futility good people association in los angeles i didn't get invited so i think it's false advertising but uh you are going to be running around in a game similar to life for monopoly or any of those ones but i think you're going to have a lot more thrown at you in the negative direction and the idea is it's supposed to be the storytelling of a black comedy so um you can be sent around in various directions and depending on what you land on um you're gonna have to do something special so it's not I think is linear as what you would find in um, Monopoly. Maybe it's more like shoots and ladders where you just try to find paths. And life will always kick you in the nuts. And I'm sure you have Board Game Geek for your collection. This is supposed to be gamification social media platform for gamers. It is a WordPress website that has some type of extra layers for programming to maybe add users that theoretically could also function as a dating site. I don't see anything on the game side wise that does anything better than uh, board game geek. It doesn't have the, um, the deep amounts of uh, one player base to being able to look up any game and find stuff out about it or the market functions or anything else um, that's in there. And as a dating site, it didn't really have anything in it that um, worked very well for that function. I think that they're trying to make WordPress do a little too much. And that's why it's not really uh, as functional as it could be or should be. But if you're going to organize a gaming group maybe this is better for that instead of just using facebook uh but it's hard to get people to jump on it so while there may be some things that work really well for you i just haven't seen anything that works better than the al current alternatives just yet and maria de jesus had some other model up last week and then it got pulled right away um so they've come up with another one uh, i'm not going to scroll down because this is not safe for work type of uh, content, but I do not want to be a person that is not inform you that it, this exists because there's a lot of folks that would like it. Um, one of the guys down at one of the local game shops always loves this uh, anime style stuff in uh, erotic, dark 
um, poses and things like that. So that's his specialty. So I know there's a lot of people, don't judge whatever your art style is, whatever it is that you enjoy. That's fine by me. If you like it, check it out. And they have other content as well in the same exact vein that they've been putting out. Um, maybe three models in this kind of kind of aesthetic so far. And you might be able to find some more. Then if you're looking for some pewter metal heroes, this is the Pewter Heroes Trilogy. So you have three new card games that come with a uh, character um, that you can use. So there's aliens, tanks, and the mole, the whack-a-mole uh, type of deal. And they have their own little board, and each one is made up of cards. So you had that adventure. Then you're going to be going around in a French light tank uh, on the western front, um, trying to find uh, an AWOL tank, I think. So that's kind of neat. And then for two to five players, find the mole. So they may look cute, but they menace your garden. My grandfather had the same problem. And you're going to be doing what you can to add stinky flowers and insects to the communal garden and hopefully be able to find the mole. So I don't know that the metal figurine does anything really other than add to the cost. But uh, sometimes it's just kind of neat to have something special like that to get you to play all the games. And there has been a surge in really cool mimics around this time last year. Uh, and then it died down. Hopefully the mimic sacks here is a way to increase that. And that might be the next step. They were doing like mimic dice and much other cool things. And this time they're going to be um, sacks of potatoes and onions and whatever else you have in sack form or barrel form or box form kind of lying around they're 3d printable and uh it's you know just something that's going to lie in wait and look normal until all of a sudden no one expects it it's the spanish inquisition full of mimics then if you don't like listening to me how about you get yourself some horror audio plate mill games out here in burbank has decided to come up with another audio collection for you and uh you can get some free ones i think they have a watermark that's part of it um, and you can check out the various stuff that they've had already. Um, you can use these in your streams and podcasts. So that part is cool. Just give them a little attribution. And once you picked it up for 30 bucks for the current one and what 600 bucks for everything. I wish they had something kind of in between, but maybe there's going to be a pledge manager for some other pieces of uh, things that they've created, or maybe you get it from their website and that's how it works. Ian Lovecraft out of Texas is a sculptor of cool things uh, that came out with before as well. And this time we have more fantasy stuff. So in this core set, you get a king and their court, um, some dwarfs, some princesses, etc. Um, everybody's a little short in the legs, uh, so it's got that kind of scale to it. A cool looking dragon, um, various other characters. These are all, I believe, STLs. Um, so, yeah, these are all STLs. You're going to have to print these out yourself. There's a lot of curves on them, so I would recommend a resin printer. And there's something popping up that uh, may fulfill your grandest desires for resin printing that uh, just launched. So maybe we'll check that out in a minute if you like any of these um, fun little folk then uh, maybe the, the solution to that will be popping up in a minute. So just remember which ones you think are cool instead of thinking like, oh, I think they're cool, but I don't know how I'm going to print that. Then uh, maybe just being on the side of, I think that's cool. And you got all these little dwarves and folk to do that. So lots of neat terrain that you can put together. All kinds of stuff. You get the point. Then you have Fifth Evolution, Carbide City number two. This is for superheroes. And um, Fifth Evolution superheroes, I believe, it keeps saying 5e game mechanics. Um, I think that they're going to be based on Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition rule sets. Although it's not clear because it's called Fifth Evolution and it keeps saying 5e, they could be the same thing. So. 
I don't know if they're just trying to confuse people or, or what the story is supposed to be. Anyway, if it is supposed to be 5e, then you'd be familiar with the rule sets and how the, the books are basically laid out. And you can print and play and go from there. Um, yeah, 5e spells and powers are basically the same thing. Skills and, and spells, they're, they're all resolved basically the same way. So if you've just been looking for a way to find a more modern time frame instead of in that fantasy world, and you want something that is a modern fantasy of superheroes, then maybe this is a, something that will help you combine the familiar with what you want. I'm going to have to grab water in a second here. But not before Die of Newt spell components. Dice. So, uh, yeah, they just have this uh, cage. It's like a, a metal uh, cage that goes around the pieces. Sets a high contrast between the numbers and um, what the cage is made out of. Hopefully this means that they're hollow uh, or at least fairly lightweight if they're metal on the inside. And that will not hopefully break your uh, tables and <laughs> other uh, stuff. If they were full on heavy metal, like solid, then uh, you might break your dice towers, your tables, everything, your windows nearby your feet when you step on them so if they're they're hollow on the inside then hopefully the the weight comes down quite a bit and they don't get thrown around like bullets but if you want something on the plastic side we have diffusion dice these are special acrylic dice for your classes creatures whatever kind of fun stuff you want lots of different colors different things that you can add um, little sparkly bits uh, there are various uh, I don't know if like the, the high, like the, if the set for classes, I'm not sure what sets them to be classes. It might be the graphic on the high value, uh, but they don't really show it off. There's, um, just a bunch of stuff. There's so much little symbols, different things that you can pick out. So just scroll pretty quickly, give you an idea. Bard's got colors all over the place. Uh, I don't know how the monks... Maybe it's supposed to be like jade. And that's how that works, maybe. Barbarians, it's red. Okay, so there you go. There's the the high symbol that's on there. So, druid maybe. Nope, ranger. <laughs> Another type of green is druid. And uh, other things that you can you can pop out. So if you've been needing some dice, you want them in a special kind of color, $14 gets you one set of seven. And if you want to pay more than that, then there's some discounts based on the type you get. Uh, you don't have to be stuck with this particular um, graphic or whatever the case is. Uh, you, you can use them for whatever you want, whatever you think looks cool or sounds cool. But one thing I will tell you, if you did have all of these split up for whatever types of characters you're playing with and you rolled all your initiatives and damage and your to hits at the same time, then you could easily figure out who's doing what quickly and you won't have to wait for people to make so many decisions. You can just kind of like agree on what you're going to do and uh, that might speed up combat, throwing that out there. Then we have Dragon Lock and uh, this is part of Dragon Key which I think is the system for connecting the pieces together. So this is terrain, different things that you can put out. So they have, uh, as you can see, the little key at the top of this one. So the trap actually moves, which is kind of cool. So that is um, this dragon bite thing. Uh, you can actually cause the doors to go up and down using the key. Uh, is there another one? Yeah, so like oozes could jump out at you. Um, other types of uh, spike traps. How cool is that? You got a spur that pops out of nowhere. And then you can pretty easily swap them in and out for modular tiles and all that kind of thing. So, I don't know. I think if I were in the mood for some terrain, then that would be a pretty cool selling point. To be able to just pop the key in and then have the trap go off and instantly it would go, wow! And everybody would be all amazed and stuff. That would be pretty cool. So $25 or more gets you one of the sets. Uh, and the, you get a couple of discounts as you move across. 
90 bucks gets you all of the sets of all the cool things that they've got. I don't know if Dragon Lock is affiliated with Open Lock or if you can mix and match them together, but Dragon Lock is the the brand uh, for these things. So lots of cool little terrain pieces and traps that actually move. It's like when you were a kid, seven years old, and you're watching TV and all the cool people do all this stuff with their professional sets on TV and you're like looking down at your shoe or whatever that you have as your uh your your play set to uh to make it the thing work now you can just print them all off and have all the cool play sets that you saw on tv or better all to yourself then we have the apotheosis 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 there we go maybe that's how you say it not affiliated with uh, kingdom death not affiliated with hercules going off into olympus but this is a dynamic tabletop role-playing game uh, trying to make an immersive player experience, which means nothing because all of them are. <laughs> so um, character creation is the core aspect because it's the same in all of them. No difference. So what do you got? You got a cool minotaur axe-holding thing, which is kind of nice, neat. Um, they have 500,000 or 10 to the 44... Uh, character options that doesn't really mean much since you can pretty much make anything out of anything um, so the combat system they say a lot of things um, you know this is the first time this person is created so they don't really understand probably um, especially if they've only backed one thing ever that uh, you have to explain in detail how your system works or what's different or what it's based on. Um, even if the art's pretty cool, the arts are always selling points. But if you're going to say you have all these innovative systems, the best thing you can do in the world is to show them off and uh, try to give people some, maybe some starter rules, something quick to be able to jump in on it. Um, cool art. You know, it's already funded, so maybe they don't need my advice. But... Uh, I think that they could do a lot better if they gave a little bit more away and then you could bring people into your world where all that gets utilized. Then from Jeffrey Jones and not the Jeffrey Jones from Ferris Bueller uh, or Howard the Duck, this is Journey into the Madlands, a post-apocalyptic RPG zine. So post-apocalypse, it's like a punk rock version um, running out through the wastelands. This uh, is the first issue out. You get a bestiary, weapons, a few NPCs to go against, and some enclaves. So that part is pretty cool. Mega sized, whatever that means. Uh, but it does come with art and color and all that kind of cool stuff. So you have maps and um, different uh, types of creatures to run against. Some dinosaur looking fellas. Um, something that looks like an octopus wolf. They call it the Octorat. Um... Yeah, so kind of neat, interesting stuff going on, interesting artwork, but you got to be in love with the, the world and what you might find in it. If you're a Fallout fan, then maybe this will work for you. Then it's a little harder to describe what you're going to do with it, but coins have been popular. They pop up every once in a while. Um, there's some, some makers that make really detailed coins that you can get minted and come out with all the time. These are just regular ones, um, silver, gold, copper. Uh, so, yeah, maybe you could use them in a, a game to replace pieces of cardboard, or you can use them as some type of RPG reward. That part is up to you. Shadowversity did a thing to describe how heavy metal coins would really be if they were on your person, and that's an interesting concept. It's nice to have something tactile, or maybe you can use it for another game. That's always a possibility. They're customized. They're different. And that's the point. Let's look at some cool minis. How about a pay-what-you-want fantasy football Frankenstein? So you can get the bust that's on um, the uh, electrical table from the Frankenstein movie uh, type of uh, plinth. Or you can get the full body where he's picking at his brain. Um, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It looks like it'd be a fun one. There's a lot of Frankenstein monsters that appear in various games that you could utilize resin prints of course 
and if you need this test the coil then you can get that separately too uh, there's an anime version of him that's kind of neat so yeah they said it's like oh here's the paint job but it's the same paint job <laughs> from the top of the page uh, it would have been cool if they had shown some more of that the anime version then if you need a watchtower for any reason to use as an inn use as a fancy person's home use as some type of castle uh, castle thing then uh there you go it's a quick one um tim shea of old guard designs first time out he's giving it a shot in connecticut well good for him so if you like the the building here then give him what looks like 20 bucks so that's the cost Someone who's been around a little bit more, Zardis 3D, has a bunch of portal, temple, ruins, sci-fi stuff that you can 3D print out. Um, this would look really good. There is a ruined city. I don't think that's going to ruin too much for you, but a ruined city does appear in Rime of the Frost Maiden. So you can put these in there if you want to go through the ruined city part. Um, there are ruined cities in a lot of the D&D books. I don't think I'm giving anything away, but some of the structures that I'm looking at look like they would fit really well, uh, to tell that story. So that part's pretty neat. Um, and portals get used in a lot of places. Sci-fi camps. Okay. Uh, if you're going to have some guard robot dogs and that kind of thing. Then this is also, I think, part of the open lock system, as it's shown here. Or these might just be other um, things that the Zardos folks have made before that you could connect together. So check it on out. Then we got Deadly Dungeons, Quest for 5e. So you have 10 Deadly Dungeon adventures. If you didn't want to spend a lot of time, or you didn't have a lot of time that week, but you just wanted to make something that would add more dungeon to your D&D, then uh, Laura MCL, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, maybe it's McCool, not really sure, uh, has a couple for, for your uh, perusal and your adventuring and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, looks like the stretch goal is basically having a cover, but otherwise this is just going to be delivered from uh, Drive-Thru RPG, which means it should be pretty much done and uh, you'll get a PDF, so fairly inexpensive for 10 instant dungeons. And I like that they put how to pronounce it. This is Just Terrain, the modular wargaming system, compatible with whatever game you want to play on top of it. And it has uh, both cracked terrain and uh, sides and regular. So um, it says that if you back within the first 48 hours, I don't know if there's time for that depending on when it popped in. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is fairly large and regular uh i don't know if you, you want to find other ways to make it more dynamic but it would make it easy to pick up and put away and stack in that configuration so those are good ideas um but i think maybe it might get a little boring uh if you don't uh work hard at adding some new stuff on top of it just because it is such a regular um setup you know what I mean? It's just like brick after brick after brick, as opposed to something a little more... If they were smaller, then you could have more dynamic um, pieces, but that isn't necessarily why you'd buy this one. Why you'd buy this one is because it's bigger so that you can quickly put it together. So, different strokes for different folks. I'm running out of steam, but we're going to make it. Um, this is Material Shards, 10 Mythical Artifacts. If you got the, the 10 dungeons, then maybe you have... Uh, a need for 10 mythical artifacts to go through those dungeons to get to pick up. So uh, the art's all there. Let's drive through RPG. Maybe you ask them what the artifacts will be or because the price is pretty low. Uh, first time creator, uh, they want 12 bucks for the PDF. Okay, it looks like a Swiss army knife, a shield, uh, maybe some type of leg or boot couple swords talismans that kind of thing so if you need some more items then maybe the price is right for you and then the title here may be a little on the problematic side just because not everybody wants to be called queers 
uh, even though it seems like they're trying to manga it up and maybe they're part of that community. Um, but I don't know. It just seems like uh, we're starting to finally get rid of the um, like the, the, the Washington football team's name. Um, and there's a lot of other stuff other than just the N-word that uh, people say about each other. And I don't know if you just throw that on and like, I'm going to own it. It's like, would you throw the N-word on there? No? Well, then maybe you should rethink about this. <laughs> So throwing that out there, City of Mists is what it's based on. So this is a um, hero, superhero kind of team, but they're wanting to be specifically in the LGBT uh, spectrum of sexualities and characters. And that's fine. You can do that with anybody. So I just ask that maybe think about the longevity of your titles So we're in a quickly um, changing world and maybe, maybe you go for the things that aren't most likely to run headfirst into a problem. Throwing that out there. But if you like manga uh, and you want to be um, in a gay manga world with rainbow dice, Maybe check this one out. And as you can see, I backed this one. This is the Anycubic Photon Ultra. Uh, Anycubic made the Viper, which has been the 3D printer I've been using for a few months now. And I love it. It works pretty darn well. Um, This is supposed to be something that simplifies a lot of things for beginners in resin printing. It is not the cheapest one, but you don't always want the cheapest one because the components... This one here has the next type of technology that will be coming out for resin printing and it adds to longevity. Instead of having things being printed using LCDs um, that wear out, so it's a part that you do have to replace, and there's certain films and things that you have to replace, this uses a projector and um, Texas Instruments helped them create it. And even at a very low resolution, they are able to produce superior products. So there's a lot more details you can see on your AB comparisons. And um, it's one third the size of a grain of rice. I don't know if that's short grain, long grain, basmati, you know, because there's a difference. But um, it seems to be that um, it is... For my concerns with this DLP system lasting 20,000 plus hours, that might be the the only amount of time I ever use it, a lot better than the latest in LCD technology at 2,000 hours um, and the replacements, you know, at 700 bucks. So this unit here that has to get replaced is the same cost as the whole printer uh, for this Anycubic model. The DLP stuff is 720p, but... Uh, because the technology uh, is different, it shouldn't. It should still produce better prints, even though it's claiming to be 720. So you might be able to find better pieces. Um, look at how like that chainmail. You can all see all the individual pieces and all things through it. When I was looking up the strength of various types of uh, materials, the resin overall has been stronger than the regular FDM plastic. One thing to note, however, is that while it is incredibly high detail, it does not come in a lot of colors. Uh, If you're going to get PLA, you can get PLA in whatever Pantone color you want for the most part. Color shifting, all kinds of crazy things. The main thing here is you might actually be able to get transparent um, resins, uh, depending on the printer, and um, that's one cool thing. Uh, the other thing is this one is supposed to be quiet and the Anycubic Viper is very, very quiet. Um, so I, I would expect them to be able to do the same deal. It looks like most has sold out except for this Kickstarter special, which puts it at about $500. That's without tax and that's without an included shipping. So the tax and, and shipping are included, uh, for the United States. 
Uh, I don't know if you have to pay VAT taxes because we don't have VAT, VAT taxes here. So don't take my word for that on that. You may still have to pay VAT taxes. But um, you can get it for wash and cure station to bring the overall price down and some resin to go along with it. Because just like a console these days, it doesn't come with a free game. So you have to buy some resin to put it in there. So these are the free shipping countries. And if they don't fit within that, then you might have to pay some extra. So January is when they say they're going to come out with it. And since the parts, other than the, the projection system, are pretty much the same thing any cubic's already putting into their photons, just a little bit different colors, uh, I would expect that January date to happen. And uh, maybe in February, you'll see me making a lot of cool stuff and uh, throwing it on the Instagram or whatever. But uh, for a beginner, I think that this has eliminated a lot of the stuff. It has not eliminated everything being toxic as hell. So you still have to keep that in mind. Everything about resin printing is toxic. But um, as far as having a very quick printer, one and a half seconds per layer, then um, I think it's an interesting start to get something that has pretty high res and I can start doing minis with. I love the idea of Weird West, and Duster is a post-apocalyptic gas punk, so I guess that's a Weird West plus Mad Max tabletop uh, system. Um, I don't think it's based on anything that I'm aware of. Uh, I don't see... So it's two regular uh, D6s. I don't know if it's Savage Worlds or not, but Savage Worlds does something pretty uh, similar. You have mental, physical, and emotional things to track. And, um, and you have an action point combat system. So it's a little bit of Gasland, a little bit of uh, Rifts maybe, <laughs> um, a little bit of Deadlands all kind of thrown in together. And uh, something that isn't too complicated with uh, options, but still is kind of neat playing out the Weird West and all the cool things that you might find out there. Then we have a weird type of dice. It's the best you can say. These are metal dice with uh, different geometric shapes called edge rolls. And um, I think the idea is it's supposed to land on its edge. Maybe that's the point. Uh, it's the only one we saw roll. Otherwise you have shapes. So instead of numbers, you have shapes. So if you can quickly identify a triangle, then you have a three. If you can quickly identify a square, you got a four. Uh, a dot, I guess, is one. And I guess, yeah, half is two. Half of a, of a, of a circle. And then the rest is just the number of sides. Uh, sure. It's just weird. It's just something if you wanted to be different, then you can jump on that. I don't know how you consult your cat. But this is how to RPG with your cat. You're supposed to be able to bring uh, your kitty in with you. Um, I know a lot of people like to be able to do that. And uh, I think the adventure is just set up for it. But I don't know if explaining the rules is going to go very well. Because it's a cat and they do not speak English. But um, yeah, maybe you can put catnip in this little baggie. And maybe that will help them pay attention. So... I guess it's an interesting idea. Um, for 250 bucks, you get all these signed copies and cages and dice jails and other kind of things. People like pets, and they like to bring their pets into everything that they do, and this is just one way to bring it into your RPGs. Then we have another type of 5e system to bring superheroes. This is Legends of the Metaverse. Uh, so they can't say multiverse because... Marvel and DC have that, so they have something else. Um, they have what look like very usable comic book uh, things. This is uh, some piece that makes uh, Catman and Captain America go together. Um, yeah, 5e, you know what the rules are. You know how basically the things are functioning. And the spells, as I said before, are going to be utilized in skills with just different types of classes. Um, they can name it any way they want, but basically they roll into the same basic archetypes. Um, so 
you get all the different powers and power sets and other neat things and it's just instead of having to always do everything by horseback and by pulling a wagon you can do things in a world you're more familiar with so you can do all kinds of the crazy things that you see in comic books but like this speedster maybe that's just haste you know what i mean like it, it does the same kind of um action economy and all that kind of stuff so how you play it is up to you and if you're a big fan of comic books maybe this is something that you'll check out and I guess I can watch either the new What If or the new Nailed It. Oh, man, such a choice. Uh, if you have a hard time making choices, maybe you need to bring all your paints with you because you can't figure out uh, which ones to take. And that's what this portable paint case is about. It's just a big old piece of luggage that will allow you to haul some minis and some other stuff in style. It's a nice looking piece. And how much does it cost? An arm and a leg? $42 for uh, one of them, which was the organizer, 175 for the case itself. For the amount of work that kind of goes into it, <clears throat> hidden shelves and all that kind of stuff, uh, I think 175 bucks is actually on the low end. So uh, it might be worth it. If you do a lot of taking things to the, uh, the store with you uh, or other friend's house in order to paint with them, then maybe this would be fairly useful. I have too many damn paints at this point to try to like haul everything or stick everything. I'd have to make an entire separate paint uh, system. And I use the airbrush uh, as much as I can. So um, I can't bring the airbrush in the paint, 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 paint case. I can say words. I only got a few more to go. Come on, come on, tongue. You can hold out. But uh, this looks like it would be a neat way to. Um, to store a lot of that kind of stuff so throwing that out there if you want to get a jump start on the drow overhaul or uh any of the stuff that's going with the new games that uh, have driss dorden and his group then maybe this dark elf book with three dangerous adventures 160 pages of underdark fun will uh, be something that will help you out uh there's some various characters and things such as the spider queen you'll run into um, dark libraries and other cool things so artwork looks pretty neat uh, definitely all drow definitely all spider queen and it's a good place to get started if you needed more adventures with uh, these dark elves before they turn them into good dark elves in uh, a couple of months or less than a year whenever the next book thing comes out uh, that goes along with it so fun things to check out then we have lightweight dice, still made out of metal, but this time made out of aluminum, so they're a little bit less dangerous. Um, keeping in mind this is aircraft grade aluminum, but aluminum is a fairly soft metal, so you might get some scratches and things like that. But they might look a lot better with some, some scratches on them. You don't know. Uh, depends on what you hit them with. So they have this uh, futuristic font that go along with it. And uh, I guess they're all CNC milled, so they're not cast. They're individually milled out uh, and then dyed with dye chem or, or something. They probably dyed first and then cut because uh, that would make more sense. Anodize, then cut. Then if you have a character that has been uh, with you for a long time, it can be traumatic at times when they die. So maybe you want to memorialize them forever. So in here you get yourself a little death certificate to go along with it. And uh, the cause of death can be as hilarious as you want it to be. I think that would be uh, great to tell everyone, you know, this guy died because he accidentally threw a pie in a terrasque's face and it ate him. That might be fun. Then we have the Saga box, which is a subscription box. Your mileage is going to vary um, depending on how you do it. First time creator, hard to say what you're going to get. Right now, it looks like there's some minis and other things. Um, they say that they're going to throw in stuff for both players and GMs. Hopefully, uh, your GMs and your players get to switch duties every once in a while so that you can trade. Um, everybody can have a good time. But it looks like they come with uh, different spells and journals and pencils and sharpeners and all that kind of stuff along with 
these three minis in this box, but uh, maybe three minis in every box. Uh, these ones are definitely, um, yeah, they're all 3D printed, uh, but they're all resin printed. So they're going to be a little on the brittle side, but hopefully they'll be pretty strong. And uh, I don't know how many people they're, they're planning to to have as part of these boxes. The cardboard box itself looks kind of neat, like a treasure chest. You might be able to utilize that in a lot of places. Uh, right now with 16 backers, that's only 50 minis. They should be able to crank it out with whatever they come out with pretty easily. Um, that's an eighth of the size, which means they need about 100 people. So maybe they'd buy a bunch of uh, those uh, any cubic photons and print them out with that. Um, who knows? Who knows what, what they're going to do? That's it. My voice has been dying slowly. So uh, thanks for watching, etc. And more thanks if you've already liked and subscribed and uh, want to help out the channel that way. That part's cool. I'm going to get these going. And like I said, I'll go decide something to watch. It's probably going to be nailed it because it's sh shorter <laughs> and I don't have to pay as much of attention. And if I fall asleep, then uh, I put in just as much effort as the contestants. And that's fine, too. You guys have a good one, and I guess I'll talk to you on Friday.